Hello there everyone, UXW Bill here once again with another episode of Kitchen Table Electronics Repair. This time around I'm going to be repairing this nice little router which is a Buffalo Air Station Wireless G router. What makes this thing so nice is that it can run the open source DDWRT aftermarket firmware. For those who aren't familiar with the DDWRT software, it's basically an alternative operating system that can run on certain types of little home grade routers such as this one, and it gives them greatly enhanced capabilities over the stock firmware. There's a lot more you can do, and a lot more features are enabled that normally wouldn't be seen except on units that cost many hundreds, if not thousands of dollars more. Now this was given to me today by a client of mine who, who was getting rid of a box of older stuff and I had no reason to believe that this thing did not work until I plugged it in and I discovered that it was dead. I'll tell you a little bit more about why it was dead but today we're going to be studying the effects of what happens when an incorrect power supply is used with something and not just a power supply other than the one the unit came with but a power supply that completely violates the specifications of the device that it's plugged into. You see the person in question who owned this has two children, younger children, and while I wouldn't accuse them of bad behavior or being problem children or anything like that, they certainly are mischievous. And I have been called upon many times to repair things for these people, including a console television that ended up being a little too far gone and was already pretty tired anyway. They basically completely ripped the speaker cones out of it. And then, one day they called me up to say that the VCR was behaving erratically. When I got there, I discovered that the entire front panel was full of pennies. And it wouldn't be too hard for me to imagine that one of the children saw this router sitting around, possibly nearby other internet connectivity related equipment, and they happened to swap the plugs between one other piece of equipment and this thing, leading to a totally dead router, possibly even damaged. Hence the reason why some might say this was a nice router. But let's go ahead and have a look inside this thing and see what might be going on. All right, here we are at the workbench now. And normally using the wrong power supply with a device, a power supply that has the wrong polarity or outputs totally incorrect voltage or type of current, is about the worst thing you can do to a device short of physically destroying it. Because oftentimes, although there are sometimes protective measures in these devices, that's not something that you can count on, and oftentimes the expensive semiconductors and ICs act as fuses long before the actual protective circuits kick in and do their job. Now taking one of these little Buffalo routers apart is not very hard. You start by taking the uh, faceplate that covers the LEDs off there, and then this little trim strip up top pops loose. You either push it forward or push it backward. In this case, you push it backwards. And then, let's see, I probably misplaced it down here somewhere. Yep, I've misplaced it. There's a little screw underneath the label. So unfortunately, you have to puncture the label. And if you were to have one of these under warranty, Buffalo Technology would no doubt know you had been tinkering. I don't think you have to take this thing off, but I usually do anyway. And then the thing just kind of clamshells open like a CD case to reveal the main circuit board. Now ordinarily there's a little heat spreader pad in here, but I took that out temporarily to make things a little clearer. Anyway, there are a couple ways that different electronics manufacturers and engineers and designers try to protect against stupidity of using grossly inappropriate power adapters. Sometimes there are fuses, sometimes there are IC protectors, sometimes there's even a little voltage regulator or power supply circuit in here that will take any reasonable type of input voltage and still manage to step it down to the appropriate kind. And then there's the method that Buffalo Technology used which is a diode. There was a diode mounted right here on the circuit board. In fact, I've already removed it and taken it out of there. That's what it looks like right there, if it'll ever focus on it, <laughs> which it may or may not do. Yeah, there it goes. And basically what that diode does, that diode is mounted across the positive and negative inputs of the power supply so that if a power supply of the incorrect polarity is attached, hopefully it will be short-circuited by the diode's conductivity in the opposite direction of the anticipated current flow. In this case, it saved the day, I hope. <laughs> I popped this thing out of here just now with the desoldering iron, and if we get the multimeter down here, let's see. We'll go ahead and put it on the resistance testing range. 
Now a diode is like a one-way valve for electricity, so it should only have conductivity in one direction. And in a moment you'll see that this diode has definitely sacrificed itself for the rest of the router. But did it do so in time? I don't know. Let's take a closer look. Now there you can see the display screen of my multimeter, and here I have the diode on the desk where you can't see it. But I'm going to stick the test leads on it here, and if it doesn't squirt away from me, in just a moment you'll see the multimeter update to show essentially zero ohms resistance, just a very tiny bit of resistance. Now if I flip the diode around, it should gain a very high, if not infinite, resistance. But as you'll soon see, it does not do so. This diode is dead shorted. So basically any power supply that was attached to the router was being forced into a short circuit and either shut down by its overcurrent protection or hopefully blowing a fuse, though in the case of a grossly overrated power supply it might even blow tracks off the circuit board of the router or something similarly disastrous. So with the diode removed, let's go ahead and see if this router survived and if it still powers up and works normally as it should. Now before you get into any kind of component level troubleshooting, you should definitely make sure that other things related to the device that you're trying to repair are in fact working properly. A very common problem with these little routers is failure of their included power supplies. They either start putting out erratic voltages or too high or too low of a voltage or even insufficient current for the unit to operate correctly. Now the test I'm doing here with the multimeter can't hope to put the supply under enough load to verify that its regulation is working 100% properly, but it is at least outputting a voltage that is in the ballpark of the 3.3 volt rating. It's actually a little high because it's almost completely unloaded. So with the power supply ruled out, let's go ahead and plug in the router now and see if it works. Now some of you might very well be asking why I suspicion it was children that were playing with this and not the adults of the household. Well, as you could see previously, there was no antenna attached to this thing. I did not get the little stubby antenna that Buffalo Technology included with this thing when it was new. So my guess is that in addition to the wrong power supply being connected, that the children also unscrewed the antenna and made off with it. Now, on a sufficiently powerful transmitter setup, that might have proven fatal to the transmitter electronics, but a little Wi-Fi router such as this probably doesn't have enough power output capability to be damaged by that sort of condition. So let's go ahead and plug the power in here. I've got it plugged in at the outlet strip. If things are working right, all these LEDs should light up for just a moment and then the thing should proceed to boot. And it definitely looks like it's going to do that. It's going through its diagnostic routine. In a moment here, I'll plug in the computer and see if the software is actually running on this thing. And there the wireless radio just came up. So let's go ahead and get a computer hooked up to it. Go ahead and sign in to the router here. And yes, the password's password. <laughs> well, this looks like good news. That's a pretty prehistoric version of DDWRT. Version 23 SP2 from September 15th of 2006. So that ought to be updated, but it definitely appears that the little router has survived. However, I must point out in this case that this is sheer luck. We were very lucky here because all too often the outcome is not so good. So the moral of the story, the thing to take home, is the fact that power supply ratings are important and before you plug in two devices together, a power supply and a device to be powered, you should make sure that they're going to actually work together or the consequences could be disastrous. Thank you for watching, and feel free to leave a comment if you have one.